Just five days left to go. There's been an army of surrogates fanning out across the country, both campaigns. Um, on the Kamala Harris side, it's represented this remarkably broad coalition of voters from progressives to business leaders to lifelong Republicans who are putting the Constitution and country over party, as Liz Cheney puts it. One of those surrogates who's been hitting the trail very hard is Senator Bernie Sanders of Vermont. He helped kick off the Progressives for Harris Group's launch call in August after the switch put Harris at the top of the ticket. In just the last few weeks alone, he's been campaigning across the country in Michigan, Pennsylvania, Wisconsin, even down in Texas. Senator Bernie Sanders, independent of Vermont, joins me now. Um, Senator, you've been out on the trail. You've spent decades talking to folks, talking to voters, uh, know what campaigns are like. What's your general feeling about things right now? Well, I wish I could give you some brilliant analysis, but I'm going to tell you what everybody else is saying. It's going to be a very, very close election. It's going to come down to small numbers of votes and a handful of states. But what I will tell you is going to Pennsylvania, uh, going to Wisconsin just a few days ago, uh, there's a lot of energy on the ground. I was especially delighted in Pennsylvania to see hundreds and hundreds of trade unionists coming out in Erie, Pennsylvania, Harrisburg, Pennsylvania. They're going out. They're knocking on doors. They know what this election is about and why Trump has got to be defeated and Kamala has got to be elected. So a lot of energy on the ground, uh, large meetings in uh, Wisconsin college campuses, Madison. Uh, we're making some progress. Yeah, it's, the, the point about trade unions is, is interesting. Um, it sometimes feels that like Elon Musk was like conjured from the mind of Bernie Sanders to uh, em embody the billionaire class, like with his, you know, using essentially Citizens United to spend hundreds of millions of dollars. The record that he's had virulently anti-union in the actual businesses he runs, particularly Tesla, the right. promises he's right. making. It seems to me, I wonder how much that's penetrating, but it does seem to me like if you have any question about which side the Trump campaign's on, Musk's presence is a pretty good indicator. Well, Chris, you're absolutely right. And one of the things that has bothered me is we have not talked enough about in this campaign the unbelievable amount of money that billionaires are spending. You know, in Trump's campaign, you got three billionaires who are spending combined hundreds of millions of dollars uh, to elect Donald Trump as president. Democrats have their billionaires. But what we have got to deal with is the reality that we cannot allow this type of billionaire money to determine yeah. who the next president of the United States is. And the word has got to go out. Citizens United has got to go, in my view, public funding of elections. You know, one of those other billionaires, uh, Miriam Adelson, who's the widow of the late uh, Sheldon Adelson, um, casino magnate, right. also given, I think, about $100 million in the Super PAC last um, She's someone who cares very de deeply about uh, American policy towards Israel. She is very supportive of the right-wing Likud government in Netanyahu and the possible annexation in toto of the West Bank uh, and right-wing Israeli politics. She's given Trump $100 million and clearly thinks she's going to get something from it. I think it's fair and rational to say. Um, you put out a video the other day sort of addressing people in the Democratic coalition who are frustrated or upset at the Biden-Harris administration towards Israel regarding the Gaza war and explaining why you think it's so important to vote for Harris. Um, give me the version of that talk, particularly given the context that I think Mary Adelson's probably got a good read on what you're going to get from a Trump presidency. Well, look, the bottom line is there are many, many millions of Americans, including myself, who strongly disagree with Biden's and Harris's position on Gaza and their support of Netanyahu. I don't have to go into a great length now. I think viewers understand that what's going on in Gaza now is horrific in terms of the loss of life, the number of people injured. And now, because Israel is blocking humanitarian aid, we're looking at mass malnutrition of children and starvation. And they're going to make it even worse by not allowing UNWA to uh, provide humanitarian aid in Gaza. What I think is it's important for people to know, especially young people, that as wrong as Biden and Harris are on this issue, Trump is even worse. He is being supported by Mrs. Adelson, huge amounts of money, and she is rapidly pro Netanyahu. We cannot even, this is really quite incredible, quite embarrassing, is that at a time when children are starving, in Gaza, 
We could not get Republicans to even support humanitarian aid, feed hungry children. So the point of my video, which kind of blew me away, it's gotten over 15 million views right by now, is that, yeah, we disagree with Harris on this issue, but we have a much better chance, and I promise I will do everything that I can to move the administration to change their policies and not continue to provide financial aid or military aid, offensive aid to Netanyahu. But we have a much better chance of changing U.S. policy yeah. uh, under Harris than certainly under Trump. You know, I, I've been thinking about that, a reference that I think you'll appreciate. Uh, I was not there for, but, you know, the 68 campaign, people were very, very understandably and rightly enraged at, at Johnson and, the, and, and uh, the Democratic Party over Vietnam. And Nixon, people forget this, but Nixon basically ran as the peace candidate in 68 and then immediately started bombing Cambodia in secret and caused the loss of life. I mean, that 68 weighs heavily because, believe me, it can get worse if the wrong person is elected president. And I think about that all the time. Well, I think that's a good point. And let's understand that Netanyahu was a right-wing racist extremist, prime minister in Israel, surely wants his good friend Donald Trump to be president of the United States. Two right-wing extremists working together. Yeah. So I think on this issue, again, uh, even even on this issue, Harris is going to be far superior to Trump. And we have a chance, if millions of us get active on this issue, to change U.S. policy uh, in Gaza. Senator Bernie Sanders has been crisscrossing country talking to trade unionists and folks at college campuses and put that video out, 50 million views. Thank you, sir. Appreciate it.